good morning children so today we will start a new chapter that is chapter 7 our country india now in this chapter children we are going to read about locational setting of india the neighboring countries of india then political and physical divisions of india so today we will read about the introductory paragraph of this chapter so india is a country of vast geographical expanse in the north it is bound by the lofty himalayas the arabian sea in the west the bay of bengal in the east and indian ocean in the south wash the shores of the indian peninsula so children as we all know india is a very vast or it is a very big country and it has many geographical or natural or physical features like it is surrounded by the lofty or very high mountains that is the himalayas then on the west we have arabian sea on the east we have bay of bengal and in the southern portion we have indian ocean that washes the shores of indian peninsula now children we all know that the southern portion of india is also known as peninsula because it is surrounded by water bodies on three sides so on the west it is surrounded by arabian sea on the east it is surrounded by bay of bengal and in the south it is surrounded by indian ocean that is why the southern portion of india is also known as a peninsular portion now children the pe- the definition of peninsula is already given beside this paragraph so the definition of peninsula is the peninsula is a piece of land that is surrounded by water on three sides so children please memorize this definition now india has an area of about 3.28 million square kilometer the north south extent of sorry from kashmir to kanyakumari is about 3200 kilometer and the west east extend from arunachal pradesh to kutch is about 2900 km so children the total area of india is about 3.8 million square kilometer so that is the total area of india and from north to south that means from kashmir in the north to kanyakumari in the south the total distance is about 3200 km and from east to west that is from arunachal pradesh in the east to kutch in gujarat in the west the total distance is 2900 km then the lofty mountains the great indian desert the northern plains the uneven plateau surface and the coast and islands present a diversity of landforms so children in india we have variety of different landforms so we have mountains which is himalayas then we have a desert which is the thar desert then we have northern plains then we also have plateau we have coasts and lastly we also have two groups of island which is andaman and nicobar islands and lakshwadweep island so we have so many different landforms in india so we can say that there is diversity of landforms in india means there are different types of landforms found in india now there is a great variety of climate vegetation wildlife as well as in the language and culture in this diversity we find unity that is reflected in the traditions that bind us as one nation india has a population of more than 120 crores since the year 2011 it is the second most populous country of the world after china so children india has a variety in the climate also 
means India experiences many different types of seasons. Then there is a variety of vegetation found in India means that there are different types of forest found in India like we have mountain forest, we have tropical forest, we have deciduous forest, we have desert forest. So we have a variety of vegetation also. Then there are so many different types of birds and animals found in India. Then people live in different states. So they have their own language, they have their own culture and tradition. So in spite of so many differences or diversity, we are still united. Why we are united? Because our traditions bind us as one united nation. And lastly children, in the year 2011, the total population of India was about 120 crores. But today, if we see, the population of India is almost 135 crore. So, 135 crore people are living in India. And that makes us the second most populous country in the world after China. So, China comes at number one position in terms of population. And then at second position comes India. So, children, that is it for today about locational setting, neighboring countries and political divisions we will do in the next class. So children read till the portion where I have taught today and I will see you in the next class. Thank you children.